we got a special guest in the house for the first time ever in the history of Babylon FM. This is so, so cool. Please give a warm welcome to the ambassador of Philippines. It is Mr. Colom here. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Good. What an honor. The ambassador of Philippines right here in our house. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for the invitation. All you, right. You came from Baghdad this morning, right? Yes, I, I did. All no, the not, way to not this morning. Last, uh, Last night. Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Yes. So you've been here for a few days. Yes, few days. Is this your first time in the city? Very first time. Wow. How do you like it? How do you find Erbil so far? Oh, very nice. I, um, it, it's totally different from, uh, from Baghdad. Okay. Yeah. It is very different yeah. from Baghdad. Uh, How long have you been in Baghdad? Uh, two months. Okay. Although I was here, uh, although I, I served here for a month in January and February this year. Okay. And so three months in all. And of course, you know, uh, I want to say it was last year we got the chance to meet um, your vice deputy, uh, Mr. John Snow, who's in the house right here. Can you give a warm welcome yeah, yeah. to him as well? Yeah. Wonderful man. Okay. This, this guy is just really cool. Like, like he's just cool. Has a cool name too. Yeah, he has a cool <laughs> name too. It seems like you, you have a really good team in Baghdad, right? Yes, very good team. Tell us about your team like how big you guys like like what do you guys you know what office what kind of office do you guys have in terms of services is it a full functioning ambassador uh, embassy uh, when did it open tell us a little bit about the philippines uh, ambassador's office the uh, embassy in um, in baghdad has uh, has been open i believe since the early 70s and um, but because of the unfortunate events that have happened uh, in this part of the world we have uh, downgraded our relationship from a full embassy into a, what we call a Sergé mm -hmm. uh, level of relationship. And actually, even if I have a uh, full ambassadorial rank, my title is uh, Sergé de Affairs. Okay. Uh, but uh, all the privileges of an ambassador are there. And uh, my team is, uh, we have six uh, diplomats from the Philippines. We have four local hires, so that's uh, 10. And we are hiring uh, one more. Who, who will be an expert on Kurdistan, actually. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, you did talk in the news. You, you did tell our, I believe, our president or our, or our prime minister that you are really seriously interested in finally opening a consulate here in Erbil. We already have one. The honorary oh. consul is here. And uh, it's, um, it's not a regular consulate in the sense that the staffing uh, comes from uh, Manila. Yeah. But uh, the, the service would practically be the same. That is wonderful. So um, we have so many things we need to cover. As you know, we have a big Philippines community here mm -hmm. um, and they have become a strong part of our society right here. Mm -hmm. So um, what is the purpose of your visit? Is it to meet those pe people? Um, is it to, uh, is it, was it a political meeting? What are you doing here in Erville? Uh, yes, uh, good question. Uh, my first uh, task here is to uh, connect myself with the government. I've made uh, many calls to the foreign minister, to the interior minister, to the acting president of the, the parliament, to the interior minister, and uh, today I'll meet with the Peshmerga minister, and then I'll also meet with the, um, the town, uh, the city administrator. So I'm here for that reason primarily, but I mm -hmm. also want to meet the Philippine community, and I have reserved time for you. Well, thank you so much. It's you know, it's an honor to have you here, Ambassador. I've been reading through your bio as you've been speaking, yes. and you have had a very long and successful career. You've been all over the world, United States, Russia, the UAE. Yeah. You have a degree in law. Yeah. I mean, it's just really an honor to have you here. Um, uh, tell us what it's, you know, what it's uh, the first, you know, I guess, what it's been like and what, what are some of your goals, uh, you know, uh, bigger goals for your, your stay in Iraq? Yes, um, my very first uh, initiative, if you can call it that, was to, uh, um, we have four levels of uh, warning systems. We call them, uh, mm -hmm. um, what do you call them? We have uh, uh, alert levels. And uh, right now we are in the, in the lowest rung of, uh, of this alert system. And um, I want to have it improved uh, at least one notch higher to normalize the stay of our citizens here. It's a tough job because the committee that does that is, is quite a, a big one. And uh, as you know, if the committee is involved, uh, all ideas are, uh, are sorted out and uh, it's difficult to attain a consensus. And once we reach a, the, the, um, the improvement of that alert level, we will be able to, um, we will be able to uh, have our citizens come here uh, on a normal basis. 
How are the relationship currently between the Philippines and Iraq? You are, of course, the most important uh, person representing the government here. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? Are we trading with each other? Are we... Uh, mm. I know you want to talk about something really important and we're so excited about it. We're so happy with... Mm. Tourism! I think that's one of the topics you want to talk about. So, so tell us what's going on between Iraq and the Philippines. On the nation-to-nation uh, -nation level, we have excellent relations. Uh, Iraq has always been very supportive of the Philippines in all its um, initiatives and undertakings, let's say in the UN. And um, we, the, the only thing that's, uh, if you can say, um, uh, like a pebble on the road is the, uh, the perception in the Philippines about uh, mm -hmm. what's going on in uh, Iraq. Um, they, they watch the media very closely and when they hear about the, uh, the, the explosions uh, near yeah. the airport, there is a, a misguided perception that right. uh, the entire Iraq is uh, on fire. Yeah, and I think the whole world has mm. this misperception in mm. general of like this place is very, you know, unstable, it's not mm. safe. That's so, right. how, I mean, what are some of the ways we can change that? Uh, um, well, um, it's uh, surprising to, to see from my uh, perspective that uh, Kurdistan is very different. Yes. It's, uh, I it's my habit to, uh, to walk and run in the mornings, but uh, it's only in uh, Erbil that I've been able to do that. All right. Have you done that here? <laughs> yeah. I That's wonderful. Excellent. <laughs> yesterday. Excellent. Wait a yesterday. minute. Were, were you at the park today, at Simon uh, Rahman Park? Yeah, yesterday. I was. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, Zoe was there too. <laughs> Maybe we can catch each other. There you yeah. go. <laughs> you guys can be running buddies. Yeah, yeah. but, but uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> next time. Next time. I come next back. time. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Inshallah. But what about this topic of uh, tourism? Like, you mm. know, us Iraqis, we have been going through something really difficult and it's just not funny anymore. It's not funny. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is Iraq is known to have the worst passport in the world where no visas are given to people so they can travel for, for mm -hmm. tourism, for medical purposes, whatever. So what can the Philippines do on this part? Can we have... Philippines be one of the first countries to accept us with our passport for tourism purposes. What's going on with that? I just want to add because Philippines mm -hmm. is a beautiful country and it has over 7,000 islands, mm -hmm. right? right? And it would be like a really great thing if we could have these kind of relationships where we, could, we can get to visit one of these islands. Um, um, I cannot hear myself. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, we, uh, we have a uh, requirement for uh, visitor visas for, for uh, visitors from uh, potential visitors from Iraq. And uh, I, I don't see any prohibition in, uh, in Iraq is going to the country. Uh, but uh, th as you know, all countries have the prerogative to accept uh, foreign visitors, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a process, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, a closed door. So just try. I mean, we, I don't remember anybody being denied. Uh, there you go. Uh, 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 yeah. There you really? go. Really? No. no. So, so, so Iraqi passport holders can apply for a tourism visa at the, for, for the Philippines? Yes. And now that you have an office in Erbil, can uh, the, the citizens that live in Erbil apply through that uh, consul? Or how, how does it work? We have to, to thresh that out because he just assumed office. It's a... Uh, if he were uh, in Asia, he would we would call him fresh off the boat. Uh, fresh <laughs> off the boat. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so we just assume Fob. office. <laughs> there yeah. we go. I, I know this very well. <laughs> so, but, but that is wonderful. That's really cool. Guys, did you hear that? If you have an Iraqi passport, it's okay. You can actually apply for yes. a Philippines tourism visa if you want to get away and have some fun. And yeah. like Zoe said, actually Philippines is one of the most beautiful countries in the world because it's an island. So, you know, I, you know it, it's all these different islands. Each one has different, um, you know, makeup of it. So so it's, it's an ex adventure. Yeah. Um, um, and, and, and our the ambassador just told us right now, Mr. Colombe, he said he doesn't remember last time they rejected a tourism visa for anybody that applied. That's right, yeah. So that is that is cool. Okay, so so we got that going on. Do you have any plans of like making any kind of programs to, to promote tourism? How, how can you get more people from Iraq to come to Philippines and have a good cultural exchange between each other? We have um, a continuing program on uh, tourism. We uh, occasionally uh, put out on our, on our website uh, what places uh, there to see. Um, we have exactly 7,107 islands. Some say depending so on the... So we was close. So we was close. <laughs> well, some say depending on the tide. Uh, okay. <laughs> some are under, uh, underwater. <laughs> yes, but we have uh, some say uh, uh, some of the best uh, 
uh, resorts uh, in the world. One of them that I can think of uh, right away is uh, Boracay, which is 40 minutes by plane from uh, Manila, just like uh, Baghdad to here, just about the same distance. And uh, there are others. I uh, every day there are new discoveries. Uh, in, in, for example, in Palawan, in near the South China Sea, we have very very nice uh, El Nido in Palawan. The, it's it's really crowded with uh, tourists. Yeah. But, but you know, pandemic has uh, this pandemic has, has affected that. So maybe now, if people can find a way to travel, this would be a great time because since it's not that crowded, so that'll be really cool. If you can travel, of course, and you yeah. know, you could take those procedures of taking the test and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What, uh, on the topic, real quick though, about COVID, how has uh, it hurt the Philippines? Are you in contact with the people back home, and what's going on? Well, it's uh, hit our economy bad, uh, badly, and uh, we we, have heard, we are encountering difficulties. But um, as of yesterday, I heard that uh, the the numbers are leveling off and uh, improving uh, slightly. News. Good news. And uh, I hope it will continue. Yeah, that way. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mr. Ambassador, I want to yes. I want you to talk quickly. Um, you know, I was reading through your bio. I tried to talk a little bit, but tell us a little bit about your history as a diplomat. I mean, you, it says you've been a diplomat and you've been all over the world. Just tell us a quick bit about where you've served and uh, all that before coming to Iraq. Yeah, well, I've been uh, in the service for 36 years now. Wow. And my first posting was in uh, your country, Washington, D.C. Uh-huh, okay. And I've been posted in the U.S. four times. Excellent. Uh, I think Chicago? Uh, yeah, it was the most recent one. But uh-huh. I also served in a very tiny island of the Pacific. Okay. In Saipan. That's a U.S. territory. Uh-huh. It's uh, 120 miles northeast of Guam. Okay. So uh, By Japan? I, Guam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah with Japan, four yeah, hours yeah. from uh, four hours, uh, yeah. from Japan. Quickest flight. So uh, I've been to Moscow. Okay. Uh, been to uh, United Arab Emirates. Mm-hmm. I uh, established our consulate in Dubai. You mentioned Dubai. There you go. And then I've been ambassador to Israel. Excellent. Do yeah. you? Yeah. Excellent. And, yeah. and and I'm guessing you've enjoyed the whole ride because you wouldn't be doing it if you didn't love it. Um, mm. But but do you have, I'm guessing you have a family. Yes. Okay, so how do you, how did you do 36 years of working outside of the country and moving so much and still having your family? Do they follow you everywhere you go? Uh, it's tough because um, my wife is a practicing lawyer in the U.S. She's an immigration and family lawyer. Oh, wow. And so th- there was a point where uh, she had to be with my kids because at, uh, when I left Washington the second time, mm-hmm. uh, my my two uh, girls were already about to, to go to college, mm-hmm. and so, so they couldn't keep moving. No, no, right. and uh, they have to learn uh, a new language if they were to enroll, say, um, in in uh, in Dubai or right. an international school there. As far as I know, didn't reach up to the collegiate level at that time when I was there. So it's tough. And here in Iraq, it's uh, no no spouse or no partner post, so you're not allowed to bring your family here. Right. So uh, it, it's a mixed uh, blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the there's good and there's bad. Yeah, the the Western postings are, are good for right. the family, but uh, the other tough. Not so. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say they're not good, but uh, they're very very challenging. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Is it for safety purposes, right? They, it's like that, I believe. Yeah, okay. uh, s- security reasons. Uh, but uh, modern technology has made up for that. You can go Skype or you can go uh, Messenger. Every day. You can see yeah. every day, them every day. So, um, uh, yeah. yeah, Mr. Yes, Colon, hey, yes, we sir. touched with Mr. John last year on an issue that we have all around the world, and that is maids. I think there is an, uh, an illegal import that, happen- that was happening, uh, as far as I know, uh, in the past years of Filipino maids how has that issue been resolved and are you doing anything uh, are you taking part in resolving that issue any further yes um, in cases where um, individuals have been trafficked we have a very active uh, anti-trafficking program and uh, it's been cited for its excellence so uh, as much as we can we repatriate them to the Philippines and um, the UN has been assisting us in this regard and uh, authorities here in, the, in yeah. Kurdistan are also very helpful to us. We, we've noticed a change in the past couple of years, and thank God, shout outs to everybody working hard, the KRG authorities, and uh, um, also some of the organizations that we've got a chance to interview here, Zoe, who are actually tackling this part, so mm-hmm. uh, this issue. So thank you so much. On the topic of the community here, um, we have lots of people, uh, lots of Pinoys right now listening to us. So uh, what do you want to say to them? What's your message to the thousands of Filipinos who have made Erbil their city? 
Uh, well, I'd like them to know that uh, I, I, I perceive uh, a certain level of comfort and happiness here uh, compared to, to, to other parts of, of Iraq. And uh, I don't mean to, uh, to uh, disparage the other places, but uh, by my own eyes, I've seen uh, how, how people live here. And uh, I'd like them to be reassured that we are um, uh, constantly uh, working hard to see to it that the alert levels will be improved uh, in their favor so that they ca can come here legally and uh, without any problems. Uh, yes. But uh, that is a um, long shot because I'm not the one deciding it. It's Manila's. Mm -hmm. And in Manila, it's a committee. <laughs> so you know how a committee works. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I hope it happens as soon as possible. A full-fledged embassy in Baghdad and a full consulate in Erbil so mm. that um, uh, these people do not have these kind of difficulties and these legal mm. uh, uh, obstacles in order for them to have a normal life here. Mm -hmm. I love, I love the Filipino community here. Uh, we got a chance to uh, get to know them for the first time once they started moving here. Mm. Um, they don't just work work hard but they actually take chances and 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 it's yes. amazing seeing how the filipino community have even opened businesses here like during the pandemic during the pandemic that's yeah. like mind-boggling yes mm. and 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 uh, it, you know ju that just goes to show you the filipino spirit you know they don't mind taking risks taking chances during right. difficult situations so definitely they have the will they have the energy zane and um i, I think that, they deserve all the all the support they can get. So Manila, come on, please, Manila. <laughs> we even had a Filipino show here on Babylon FM, and uh, that that goes to show you that they they're doing all kinds of different things. We in interviewed uh, uh, Ferdinand and Fritzi last week, where they have a new business where they're making bubble tea, and it's the first here in uh, Iraq. Mm, it's wow. amazing. Yeah. And they bring really? it to your house and they mix it right in front of your house. Like, how? Ooh, what a cool concept. Wow. They're going to come to your garden, in your house, they mix it and they say, here you go. So Only 5,000 dinar. Yeah. <laughs> so that whole, that whole thing. Yeah, we, we have Filipinos everywhere. I think I told you I served briefly, very briefly, mm -hmm. six, six weeks in, uh, in Kabul, many right. years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I discovered there, there were 4,000 Filipinos at the time. Wow. In wow. Kabul, <laughs> I, of all places. And then... Um, I've been to um, uh, Iceland as well. There are 200 okay. Filipinos in Iceland, so uh, you f you find us everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, well, they contribute greatly uh, positively to the society, so we're honored to have them here, and we continue to hope uh, they succeed and, and find happiness uh, in our city. Uh, mm. If you're just joining us, this is the Philippines ambassador to Iraq, Mr. Colom here, right here, joining us, and it's an honor for us uh, to, to just get to know you and know exactly what's going on um, with the embassy. So uh, you're traveling back to Baghdad today? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So, yes. so uh, how long are you staying in, in Baghdad for? Your post is until when? Oh, uh, that's um, um, it's a very iffy question because uh, our tours are not uh, normal mm -hmm. uh, in a way. We we can be there as long as short as a few months and uh, as long as three years. It can even be six years if you yeah, want yeah. to be there. So it's an uh, indefinite uh, stay. Let's talk about important things like food. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what have you eaten from here, from Kurdistan, from Iraq, that you really loved? Oh. That's another excellent question. Uh, last night we went to a uh, cultural restaurant in the sense that it is, uh, uh, they say, uh, it's a Kurdish restaurant. Okay. And uh, Do you remember what you ate? Uh, maybe John. Uh, John, what did he eat? Do you remember? <laughs> he had masgoo. Ma masgoo. Yes, masgoo. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah. You like fish, obviously. Yes, very much. And how, uh, how, how, do you, how would you rate the masgoo? It's excellent. It's, uh, I can eat it every day. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Seafood obviously is a big deal for the uh, Philippines because, of course, it's by island. So yes. uh, it's part of the stable food. Mm. Have you gotten a chance to eat some of the other things like kebab? Yes, kebab, yes. How would uh, you rate kebab from 1 to 10? 1 to 10, uh, 8 maybe. What about dolma? <laughs> Have you gotten a chance to try dolma? What's that? Oh, my God! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have he's to not going back to Baghdad until he tries Doma. Short time, but he's leaving tomorrow. So today lunch you or tomorrow to morning. Doma works with everything. Hatta's in the breakfast. It's okay. He's got to have Doma. There's no diplomat that leaves Erbil without trying our Doma. I'm sorry. I guess sir. that's been put on sorry, your agenda. Sir. Is I'm that sorry, a sir. meat dish? 
Uh, it, it, it can, can, it can, it can yeah. have meat in it, but it's just that if, if you like sour food, it, it comes sour, but it also doesn't doesn't have to be sour. It's just really good food. Yeah. It's just really good. And I know most men don't like it. That's a stereotype. I don't like the stereotype. <laughs> they just okay. pretend that they don't like it. But they eat it. They eat it. Yeah. So, so Dolma for, for Mr. Ambassador before he leaves. Please, let's make sure that happens. And you mentioned you were here uh, since Saturday. Yes. And wh what uh, have you gotten to do in Erbil? Have you gotten the chance to visit the Citadel? Or yes, that's the number one in the agenda. And uh, I was very impressed with it. So, uh, you know, it's being there since antiquity, since the beginning of time, so to 6, speak. 6,000 years. Yes. and uh, Quite a long time. Yes, it's a long time. And uh, it's now a UNESCO protected uh, place. And uh, I will come back when it gets to be opened formally because it's, it's closed now. Yeah. Uh, so very beautiful. Well, we're looking forward to having you back here anytime. Whenever you do come back, please do check in here with us. And uh, maybe we can get the Filipino show again and you can be a guest in the Filipino show in the evening. Sure. That would be wonderful. Anytime. Anything else you want to say, Mr. Ambassador, before we say goodbye to you? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, having me. And uh, my door is, uh, will always be open for you. Uh, I hope uh, you can visit us in, in Baghdad one of these days. That would be great. Uh, yeah. Let's visit you in Philippines. How about oh, that? Yeah. Uh, That'll <laughs> be even better. better. That's even better, yeah. There we and, go. And uh, it's nice to have this opportunity to interact with, with you and our people who are residing here. And I wish them all the best. Check okay. it out, the Philippines ambassador is inviting you to the Philippines. <laughs> there you go. Apply for a visa and then he'll try to make sure he'll do some wasta to get you approved. He didn't know, he says you don't need wasta. No wasta needed. No, no, no. And you'll get you'll get you'll no. get approved. Well good luck with the, the rest of your meetings and best of luck in the rest of your time here in Erbil and I'm very excited to know how you like Dolma. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah don't okay. forget you have to try uh, it today. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a feedback. <laughs> That'll be great. Okay. Ambassador Colomhead, thank yes. you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.